Hi everybody and welcome back. Today we are continuing our journey to the stars. We are going to talk about red dwarfs. What are red dwarfs? For a start, red dwarfs are, as the name suggests, red and small. They are the most abundant stars in the universe and amongst the not so popular club. They are the coldest stars after brown dwarfs and have a small mass proportional to their size. They don't have cool deaths or any exciting periods in their 10 trillion year life. 10 trillion? Yeah, you heard that right. That's more in time than I can even fathom. It's probably more than anybody can fathom. What is the secret for this long, or in our sense, immortal life? The secret is in their size. They are so small that their hydrogen fusion is very slow and uses up very little fuel. And they are too small to continue fusion onto other elements. All the red dwarfs in the universe aren't near their death stage since the universe is only 13.8 billion years old, while the average life of a red dwarf is about 10 trillion years. So all of the red dwarfs are mere infants. Even though it takes trillions of years to enter this death stage of a red dwarf, scientists already have predictions of their deaths. Not that they are exciting though. Near their end, red dwarfs cool even more and become less hot. Their fusion stops. They are too small and too cold to continue fusion outside of the core. So they get colder and colder until they turn into black dwarfs. Black dwarfs are dead black bodies of stars. They won't decompose or explode and share their materials. Because of this long and slow road red dwarfs take, when everything else in the universe goes black, they will remain shining. This is a very good thing. Our sun is much more massive and brighter than red dwarfs. It will get bigger and then explode, but more about that in the next video. In the process of our star's death, we might get eaten by our sun, but we will be burned crisp way before that. So if we want to survive, our civilization needs to seek out life on other planets. Red dwarfs are a good candidate. They last almost forever, and from the Kepler mission of finding exoplanets, we have discovered many Earth-like planets in the habitable zone. But there come a few problems with this scenario. Because red dwarfs are much less luminous and brighter than our sun, the planet will need to go into a much closer orbit around its star. This may or may not cause many problems. The first problem that might occur is, since it is very close to the star, the planet might be tidally locked. Tidally locked means that when the planet doesn't orbit around its axis, but stays in the same position at all times. This would mean that it is always day and hot on one side of the planet, while on the other side it would be cold and night the whole time. Not very practical for humans. The second problem are solar flares. Red dwarfs sometimes shine brighter, sometimes dimmer, and these fluctuations cause solar flares. They rip apart the planet's atmosphere and burn it with harmful UV light, which will cause big problems if we live there. All of these things aside, the positive thing is that we could settle there for a very long time. Red dwarfs may not seem like exciting stars, but they will provide a home for us when the universe goes dark. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you liked the video and learned something new today. Don't forget to check out my blog where I post blog posts about various astronomy, physics, and math topics. Link in the description. See you all next time. Bye!